September, Bob. And we think just in the September. Well, yeah, probably. Yeah. And, you know, and then we here we don't get back until when is it seventh or eighth. Eight, so nine, we'll really probably like the fifteenth. So the first week we come back, we have to plunge right into it. Probably forty-five or sixty days. I think we can do that with all the other. I think we can pass it on the Senate side. Forty-five days from now. Forty-five days from now. We'll probably probably from Thursday. Now yeah, fifty-three conferees. <laughs> well, what, you know, when? Understanding that someone say, well, I, I didn't think this clause meant that I, something else or not. And uh, the power for, for us has, uh, has done a thing which I think has been uh, forwarded to you. Uh, sure this one points out what the various things are, what our interpretation is. And uh, yeah. we're going to hand it out. But, uh, so I think that uh, maybe we sort of be 
We just don't want any future misunderstanding on this. And I think we're on the track of something that could be very productive and resolve the problems of all of this and separate us for a long time. Oh, Mr. President, can I say a word? That yeah. One? Uh, as I told you before, I, I greatly admire what uh, the leadership of Congress has done in exploring this possibility, and especially what Jim Wright has done, what the Speaker has done. Uh, it's been a Good to see you. Well, for once we won't have to wait for to get in and out. I won't have to have Larry Jones. <laughs> well, listen, thank you all for, for coming down. And uh, yesterday, you're probably aware that we had a meeting in here with a joint bipartisan leadership to discuss a renewed diplomatic initiative in Central America. Its objective is simple to further democracy and region where four or five countries today have elected, four of five, I should say, have elected a democratic, democratic government put in place. With regard to Nicaragua, we seek a negotiated settlement that recognizes the rights of all Nicaraguans to the basic freedom enjoyed by their neighbors. A number of you here today, I know, have devoted considerable time and attention to the problems in Central America, and you know very well what the obstacles are that those four democratic governors have encountered in the past. And we can now speak about a peace plan in a unified and bipartisan way that I think will give a real boost to a genuine effort to bring democracy to Nicaragua. And I'm going to ask George Schultz to tell us about the discussions at the summit meeting in Guatemala City, where they are now presently meeting. As I read it, Mr. President, we all can have a pretty good feeling because there are core democratically elected civilian presidents of Central American countries, in addition to the Nicaraguan president meeting there. And these four people all understand democracy because they helped to create it in their country. And in many cases, they went through quite a lot of help in getting to where they have gotten. So essentially, that meeting is. Well, the second wave will be that, but I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be uh, carrying forward the statement. Can I tell you what the yellow question is ahead of time? Was that a pass? <laughs>
trip to send me one about three inches tall. Day tomorrow. Well, we better get down to business here. I'd like to thank all of you, first of all, for coming down on what turned out to be very short notice. But uh, there's a lot of pressing business before we all leave Washington, and one of the major issues is certainly welfare reform. As I said last year in the State of the Union address, the principal issue in any welfare reform proposal is whether or not it will help people become self-sufficient and lead a full life or keep them in a state of dependency. I feel strongly that we're on the right track in proposing the Low Income Opportunity Act, which would allow states to test new ideas for reducing dependency. We also believe in the need to reform work requirements and to provide training and education. A greater opportunity through work, the GROW program, would allow us to do that. I know that all of you have been under some pressure to sign on the so-called welfare reform bills that would increase benefits and make welfare more attractive. And I commend you for your willingness to follow a responsible path to prevent increased dependency. And Bob, I understand that your task force has worked diligently with members of the administration to come up with a proposal that we can all work together on. And uh, I think I'm most appreciative of it what you've offered as an alternative. Mr. President, Ortega wants direct talks. Why not? <laughs> you got to answer that. No answers, no. <laughs> well, he says it's a sham if you won't sit down and negotiate with him. No answers. What do you think about the response so far? Some of the Democrats say this is just a ploy. Well, I think we're, we're getting together. We gotta go. And some of your friends Thank say you. that you're selling the conference act, sir. Andrew, he said no answers. We gotta go. We need well, to get started. You have an answer to that? Let's go. Are you selling the conference act? He said no answers. Let's no go, answers. please. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. We can go this door too. Let's go, please. Are you faced with this stuff every day, Mr. President? And more than once a day. <laughs> well, I'm starting to appreciate you more and more. more. Yeah. I nominate her for Ms. Warmth of the Week. Gene, <laughs> 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 Mark, are you and Andrea got anything going? Calling you and Andrea to summarize your proposal. Well, Mr. President, we uh, are both of what our task force to put together, uh, as you say, is a, a very good uh, antidote for the problem here. And I, I guess if I would, and, and Hanks and the others would take a few some of the specifics, but I think what I've uh, been hearing over on the other side of the Capitol. Yes, sir. Oh, again. Same cast of characters. Matt, you got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. This is, uh, Can I speak with you on the way out? Because this is a system that very much, and I have a very issue with it. We need to do so. We need to clear signal. I know. I'm going to suck their promise. So all of you know I have strong objections to the Senate bill, and I don't think that the House bill is any improvement. Chalmers, I know you went to a great deal of effort to offer an alternative bill. I understand that Jim Miller and uh, Sam Pierce have met with several of you to discuss this situation. Uh, Bob, I'd like to hear your views. Well, uh, Mr. President, I indicated the other day when we were here, you know, this uh, I have the uh, builders, home builders, mortgage bankers, you know, boy, they're all leaning on us like uh, mad because uh, they haven't had a housing bill now for about six years. And of course, they've had their problems with FHA, I guess. And uh, generally much in their area, and they feel damn strong about it. I know that we've had some kind of disparity, disparity between the figures from OMB from time to time, and gentlemen's got to work with it. And uh, I just thought you ought to hear it directly all of here. Uh, uh, there. We could get something that you can sign. If any, possible, uh, since the conference.